days of World War II were terrorizing Great Britain. At Hagley Woods, four teenage boys enjoyed their somewhat untimely freedom when one of them made a terrifying discovery that would baffle police and remain a mystery for well over 70 years. As they searched for bird's nest in the woods, one of the boys, 15-year-old Bob Farmer, climbed an ancient old witch elm tree. As he peered down into the hollowed out trunk, Farmer noticed something strange inside it, as an object seemed to stare back at him from where it hid inside the dark. The teenager was horrified as he began to recognize the strange object as a human skull. A chunk of hair clung to the remaining flesh on its forehead. Two crooked teeth and a pair of hollowed out eyes examined him as much as he examined it. The boys took a second and third glance at the skull, both amazed and terrified. They put it back in the tree and as they could be accused of loitering or trespassing private property, all promised to keep it a secret between them, telling no one ever. They left the woods together, peering back at the witch elf. One of the boys later became so upset over finding the remains, he ended up breaking his pact and telling his father, who promptly called the police in utter disbelief. As the authorities began searching the tree, what they found inside left them baffled, as it was bizarre to say the least. Inside the old tree trunk were the remains of a woman. Pathologist James Webster determined her to be around 30 to 35 years old, with mousy colored hair and five foot tall. She appeared to have given birth in the past, and he established her death as having been about 18 months prior to the boys finding her as well as the fact that she must have been put inside the elm soon after death, before rigor mortis could settle. All but one of her hands appeared to be inside the trunk, and as police searched and dug nearby, they found her hand buried, close to the witch elm's deep roots. She wore clothes with the labels cut out, a belted cardigan and a skirt. Her peach-colored taffeta undergarments were shoved inside her mouth, and a gold ring seemed to be once nestled in her finger before it was found, scattered inside the tree, together with the mystery woman. Webster could find no obvious trauma or injuries, and it led him to conclude that she had probably died of asphyxiation, suffocated with a clot stuffed down her throat. From his work, police managed to create a somewhat accurate description of the woman. but. As the investigation began reaching a slump, no one could come forward to identify her, leaving her nameless, until graffiti began appearing all over town a year later, asking who put Bella in the witch hut. Since then, the mystery gal was named Bella. Even the police had almost forgotten about her by the time the messages began appearing. Clues led nowhere and the war prevailed, giving the locals much else to worry about. Despite this, however, initial rumble about the murders being cult-like and witchcraft did scare some of the people around the West Midlands. The graffiti brought back the faded memories of one gruesome murder amidst the times of many. Who put Lubella down the witch home? the first one said, followed by Hagley Wood Bella. And finally, who put Bella in the witch elm? Most people would disregard these, but they had all been written by the same hand, police believed, and seemed to flutter with information no one else knew about but the author of those cryptic messages. Police too began naming her Bella, and they wondered whether the writer of the graffiti was taunting them. They could have killed her or knew who had. The theory that Bella had fallen victim to a coven of witches became popular for a while. Margaret Murray suggested the removal of the hand was typical of a black magic execution. With the absence of leads to confirm it, this strain of investigation too fell cold. 
It wasn't until 1953 that interest on the case was revived as journalist Byford Jones began writing an article about it. A letter was addressed to him, signed only Anna, and it offered new details of what happened to Bella almost 10 years after her murder. According to the letter, Bella had been murdered because of her involvement with the Nazi spy ring operating in the Midlands during the 1940s. The spy theory seemed so convincing, many people have come to believe it as being the truth. However, some have suggested that the woman in the witch elm is neither Bella or a spy, but rather cabaret singer Clara. Both theories will eventually align with Nazi Germany and spy operations, even though, according to actual spies caught at the time, the theories were too sophisticated and complicated what, upon further inspection, could be easily explained with other, less complicated theories. Looking closer at some of the statements and assumptions made by authorities, something like cause of death finds itself buried under a new mystery. Presumably ignored by police, the four boys had earlier said that in order to put the skull back where it belonged, they had wrapped material around a stick and wedged it into her mouth, lowering it back into the elm. If this is the case, and the cloth is assumed to be the same taffeta undergarments used by the boys to put her back, then what exactly is the cause of death? And was she dead at all when she found herself in the witch elm? Questions like these, or perhaps something more simple and rather important, like her nationality, could be solved with a study of the remains. Lab tests on her DNA could tell us more about her upbringing and country of origin. Sadly, quite recently, when attempting a facial reconstruction, the local police department was stunned to find that the skull was missing as they had to use photographs of the cranium for this purpose, and apparently so had almost every other physical evidence of Bella's murder and her existence. Her whole body, her whole remains, gone. If found, her bones could be tested, and a small portion of DNA could reveal her ethnicity, and once for all, resolve the questions of whether she really was a German spy or a poor British woman whose real name lies forgotten to the world.